Welcome to the Root of Power podcast, where I teach you how to chase your joy, find alignment, and create a life and a business that you love using actionable methods, interviews, and inspiring stories from people who know that true freedom is found within. I'm your host, your always hype woman and sometimes ass kicker, Amanda Chills, and I am so proud of you for choosing to step into your power. Come along, we've got dreams to build. Hello, I hope you are well. Welcome back to our own little personal party where we jam on all things helpful. If there is something that you are wanting, if there is an episode that you would like me to do or a topic you'd like me to touch on, please reach out and let me know. Um, you can hit me up on Instagram at Amanda underscore chills underscore therapist. But if you search my name, you'll find it too. Ah, I hope you are well, and I hope that you are doing things that you want to do and that life is abundant and spacious and that you get to rest and take more naps in the sunshine like a cat um, or a dog. Really, either one takes lots of naps in the sunshine, and I'm just here for both. So you saw the podcast episode title. So we're going to be talking about your gremlin brain today and why your brain doesn't particularly care if you're happy, which is a real interesting thing because we all think that our brain works for us and it does in most respects, but in this instance, it can often work against us, which is a wee bit of a problem. So what we want to do is understand the way that our brain works, and when it's not being helpful, we want to, you know, remember that it's not always helpful in every scenario, so we can put things into perspective and put what we're thinking into perspective. Um, But before we dig into that, I want to tell you about my free guide to getting to know yourself and to figuring out what the hell you care about so that when we're making decisions, when we're sailing our boat called life, we know what direction we're going in. Because if you don't know who you are, if you don't know what you value, if you don't know what's important to you, you are going to have a really hard time making decisions because you have nothing to base them off of. And so you may base them off of other people and you may take bad advice and you may do things that are completely contradictory to what you actually want because we're not rooted in making decisions that are true for you. That is a problem. We want you to have the life that you want, not the life that other people want for you or think you should have or the life that you don't want because we don't even know how to get there. taking a sip of water. So we're back. So we want you, I want you to live the life of your freaking dreams. And in order to do that, we have to know, we have to know who you are. So I have a values guide. It won't take you a super long time, but it is very powerful. And it's going to give you a lot of clarity on who you are, what you think is important, where you stand, what you stand on. And it is called confused to clear. You may have heard about it on other episodes. And it's for you. It's free. You can get it at my website, livemyhappyhealth.com slash get clarity. Get it. Love it. Let me know how it works for you. I am always open to feedback because I want to improve things and make things the best that I can for you. And now on to the main course. That was like the appetizer. And now this is the main course. Although if I were going to have an appetizer, I feel like it would be cheese sticks because like you really just can't screw those up or boneless wings. Mm. Also boneless wings, stupid, good fried chicken. One of my favorite things to eat, but that's kind of here nor there. It's just a fun fact about me. So back to, (laughs) back to the episode from our little appetizer here, back to the main course, your brain does not give a damn about your happiness. It doesn't care about you hitting your goals. It doesn't care about you thriving. It doesn't care about anything that you want. Actually, all your brain cares about is two things, keeping your meat suit running 
and doing so by spending as little energy as possible. Now, why did your brain care about that? Well, glad you asked, friend, because that's all humans have ever done, right? Our sole reason for existing, according to our brain, is to not die. And in order to do that, we have to spend as little energy as possible. We have to conserve as much energy as possible. And we have to not die. So when we're doing new things, when we're chasing goals, when we're building a life that we love, it is scary. And so our brain conserves energy and stays alive by avoiding danger, which can also be coded as anything outside of your comfort zone. It can be coded as anything that feels threatening. And so your brain does what it does. And we have four fear responses, fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. Now your brain will do one of the four at any given time. Some people do some more than others. Some people... Some people, I mean, everyone does all four, but proportionally, they probably look a little different. So procrastinating is a freeze response. I actually call it possuming. Like you play dead, hoping that the thing is going to go away, but it doesn't go away because life doesn't go away. But if you think about when our brain was developing, when we were really hitting our stride, if you will, as a humanoid species, like if we played dead, the things that wanted to kill us would go away, but we can't play dead. We can't possum our jobs or a conversation with our partner or our family member or paying taxes or paying bills. Like you can't just pretend to be dead and then those things magically go away. So we, but our brain still has that response, right? So our brain, sometimes we fight, sometimes we need to have a, a scary conversation and we get real pissed off and then the thing escalates and then then we prove ourselves right that we can never talk to people and it's always a fight and that's the fight response. Sometimes we literally run away. Some people will spend their entire lives running from emotions, from conversations, from jobs, from relationships, from their towns in order to avoid doing the shit that they need to do. And then they say, oh, it'll be better when I get a new job or it'll be better when I move houses or it'll be better when I break up. It'll be better with my next partner. Um, that would be running, friend. So flight. Some people fawn. We just give in to everything and we do whatever everyone else wants. We become extreme people pleasers. That is not helpful either. So what we need to do, and we're going to talk about in this episode, is get around our gremlin brain because the threats now are so, so different from the threats in our evolutionary history. And our brain is only wired to deal with acute stressors, acute threats, like literally someone or something trying to kill us. That is what our brain is wired for. And that's why we have those in the moment reactions where our, either we're fighting or we're running from pressure. We're running from the threatening thing. And we both know that that doesn't work in the long term. But it's how your brain is wired. And we cannot fight evolution, but we can adapt. And we can work with it by understanding how it works. So like, for example, I can't change the weather, but I can make sure that I'm not outside in a hurricane. So we can't change the way that our brain is wired, but we can manage as best as possible. And we're going to do that by a number of things. So one, we have to understand how the brain works, which is what we're obviously going over now. So our brain, when we're doing new things, when we are chasing goals, when we're growing, takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot more energy to build a house than to live in a house. Sorry. It takes a lot more energy to plant a garden than to just maintain the garden. So building always takes way like exponentially more energy than maintaining. And so what we need to understand that since one of our brains functions, there's only two keep our meat suit alive and spend as little energy as possible since one of the brain's only two functions is to avoid literally 
expending energy and doing any work, we have got to understand that you are going to try, your brain is going to try and convince you to avoid doing work and to avoid growing and to avoid changing and to avoid building things. But what happens when we don't realize that that's happening and many people don't, many people live their lives in reactionary mode simply because they don't know, which is why I'm recording this podcast episode, because once we know better, we can do better and you deserve to have the life that you want, which means we need education to get there. So what happens when you spend your life running from anything that's remotely scary is you end up with a really miserable life. Like you are constantly running, which means you constantly are stressed out because your brain literally thinks you're being chased by a bear 24 seven. And you're also feeding your little gremlin brain thoughts. So whatever we pay attention to, whatever we give energy to grows, we If we decide that those thoughts are gospel, that nothing will work out, that we're going to fail. And if we fail, we're going to die and we can't do anything new and nothing ever works out. And it's scary and people will laugh at me and they'll think I'm stupid and I'll lose everyone. We could go on forever. If you decide that those thoughts are gospel, you are going to prove them right. Because again, the brain wants to do as little energy as possible. It takes more work to challenge beliefs than it does to just decide that they're gospel and act as if they're true. But when we understand that the brain's primary functions, right? Keep your meat suit alive, do as little work as possible, is in direct opposition to growth to building something, to doing well, to changing behaviors, to challenging thought patterns, then we can see those resistances and limiting beliefs as what they are. And what they are is your brain trying to protect you. It's your brain trying to keep your meat suit alive. I mean, it's just doing its job. It's just not very helpful in that instance. So the brain is wired to actively oppose growth. And you may be like, damn, Amanda, how am I supposed to do anything then? Well, friend, glad you asked. We're going to dig right into that in a hot second. So we have to understand that your brain is wired not to grow. And we cannot fight that. You cannot fight your brain. It is smarter than you. It will come up with endless excuses. It will come up with endless doomsday stories and things that could go wrong and why you shouldn't do the things that you want to do to get the life that you want. The brain will never stop giving you those stories. Now that may sound doomsday and I don't mean it to But I say that so that you understand truly that you cannot outsmart your brain. It's it's the computer running the machine. Like you can't outsmart the machine. What we can do is just not listen to it. You don't have to listen to your thoughts. They're not gospel. They're not all true. And even if they are true, they're not all helpful. So when we're aware of our brain and the way that it works and why it's feeding us the stories that it feeds us, you're going to realize that you have the power to pay attention or not pay attention to whatever your little gremlin brain is telling you. Now, I say gremlin brain, and you're going to hear me throughout life call things gremlin brain. And not all aspects of our brain are gremlin brain, but gremlin brain is when it's being particularly unhelpful. So for example, if you are mad at someone and your brain's like, hit them with your car, that would be gremlin brain. Um, If you want to get a new job because you hate the job that you're at and you're just miserable and your brain is going, yeah, but it'll just be the same at the new job. And it's so, so much work to go to these interviews and you probably won't get it anyway and you're not going to make enough money, and you're going to take a pay cut, and it's that's too much work. We should just stay where we're at. That is gremlin brain. If you're in a relationship, and you're thinking, 
and you know that your partner sucks or is mean or you're just not happy and you're like, yeah, but I've, I've invested so much time into it and, you know, I, I really think they're going to change this time and maybe I can um, try buying crystals about it. Okay, that is your gremlin brain. Not that crystals don't work, right? I'm not here hating on crystals, but we need to do things to get the life that we want. We can't, you could do nothing, but then you're going to be miserable forever. And that sucks. I don't want that for you. You deserve better. So we are going to understand that your brain is going to come up with literally, literally endless excuses. And that most of them are probably not very helpful. I mean, really none of them are helpful, even if they're realistic. So you may say, well, but you know, my brain's not wrong. Like it's a fact that I put a lot of energy into this relationship or that lots of people are bad at relationships and it'd be hard to find someone else. Like, okay, cool. Yeah. That might be, that might be a fact and maybe objectively true, but if it's not helping you live the life that you want, it's not very valuable. And so I would question why we're feeding it other than you think you're thoughts are gospel. And that's all you know to do is to believe them. You don't have to, because now you understand that your brain wants you to do no work ever. And it just wants you in the same pattern that you're in because it's predictable because it's safe. It's safe because it's predictable, not because you're happy. Happiness is nowhere on your brain's priority list. We only want safe, predictable, spending as little energy as possible. And even though you may be miserable, if you know what to expect, if it's the same routine, if things are predictable, then your brain is happy as a little clam. Your little gremlin brain is happy as a clam because you don't have to do anything new. You don't have to try. You don't have to maybe fail. You don't have to be uncomfortable. The irony, of course, is that you're probably uncomfortable the whole time, but in a predictable way. <sighs> gremlin brain is a whole thing. So you understand that your brain is wired for keeping your meat suit alive and for spending as little energy as possible to do so, which means anything outside of your comfort zone, anything new is scary. And our brain is wired to run away from things that are scary. It's wired to avoid things that are scary. So naturally, your brain is going to come up with all these stories to justify not doing the thing so that you stay in your predictable little prison where it's safe, quote unquote, and you never do anything new. And let me tell you, that pattern will cost you your life. It will cost you your whole life because there is never, there is never, write this on my tombstone, there is never a day that comes where you are suddenly brave, where your brain stops doing that. If that is what you feed, you will lose your whole life to that. And that is heartbreaking. You deserve better. And the life that you want is possible. But you are never going to get it if we don't start managing our gremlin brain. Not that gremlin brain is bad. It's useful in some circumstances. It's just not useful in this circumstance. So... We're going to start noticing when your brain is giving you these stories and these excuses and these limiting beliefs and these protective beliefs, because your brain is just doing what it does. It's trying to protect you from failure, from feeling bad, from expending energy. So we're going to see those things for what they are without beating ourselves up. We're just going to go, okay, I see those stories. I see those excuses. But I'm, come hell or high water, I am getting the life that I say that I want. I mean, first, we also have to know what we want. So if you're like, Amanda, I don't even freaking know up from down. Like, I don't know what I want out of life. I don't know. I don't know what I'm passionate about. I hear that one a lot. Um, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I don't know. But that values exercise that I was talking about in the beginning of this episode will absolutely help you with that because it's going to help you get clear on what your priorities are. And if we know our priorities, we at least have a direction to start walking in. And I want you to ask yourself if you're like, oh my God, like I really, I really don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know what happy news looks like. I just know it doesn't look like this. One, that's really good information. If it doesn't look like this, well, then we at least have a place to start because we know we don't want this. So what about this sucks? What about your life? Do you want to yeet out the window or off of a cliff? Like, what would you just get rid of if you could? And another good question is, what's fun for you? Who is someone that's living a life that you're like, God, that would be cool as shit. All right. Well, now we have a direction to start going towards. And I want you to understand that clarity is going to come from taking action. And if we're too stuck in our gremlin brain to take action, then we never get clarity. And very often people will blame the clarity. Well, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. That is a perfect story that your brain tells you to never take action. Well, I don't know what I want. I, I have to have the right decision. I have to make the perfect decision. No, you don't. Make a decision. If you hate it, stop doing it. If you love it, keep doing it. Ta-da! This is the secret to a happy life. But your brain telling you that story, well, you have to make the right decision because if you make the wrong one, it'll be bad and everything will be bad and you'll be bad and life will be bad and we'll have a bad time. Uh, that keeps you stuck. That keeps you in prison. So start going somewhere and you will end up in a good place. I promise you. I know because one, I did it. And two, all of literally all of my clients do it. Not all of them have super clarity on what they want. It's enough for you to be like, well, oh, not fucking this, not this. This sucks. I don't want this. Okay, great. Let's do the opposite of this. And then we'll get somewhere. As if we're walking away from something, we're still walking towards something else, even if we're not exactly sure what towards is. So we have to figure out some vague, doesn't have to be specific, but the more specific, the better. But again, specificity will come from taking action. Clarity comes from action, not the other way around. You do not have to be clear 100% to start doing things. But some amount of idea will help you. So we're going to start doing that. We're going to figure out what the heck we value. So again, get my values guide. It's free. It will help you. We're going to start taking action. We're going to listen to our little gremlin brain. We're going to watch our little gremlin brain thoughts and when it throws a tantrum and when it tries to protect us, because it will, because you're doing new things and you're doing scary things and you are going against the grain. Most people spend their whole lives running not understanding that that's what keeps them stuck. You have to run towards the life that you want with no abandon, with determination, with discipline. That is how you get it. You have to be relentless. Not in that you're always working for it, but that you are never giving up. And we never turn around. We can pivot. We can do a circle. We can go sideways, but we don't stay and we don't go back even though back doesn't always exist, right? Because even if you end up, quote unquote, back in the same place, you're never literally in the same place because now you have more knowledge. Now you have more skills. Now you have more awareness, which means you're literally never in the same place that you were in, even if it feels that way. But your brain, again, your brain will tell you, we're back in the same place. You better give up. We haven't done anything. We haven't, I've done nothing. Better give up. That is your gremlin brain trying to protect you from doing new things. And we want to say, shh, gremlin brain. No, no, no. You are not going to help me get the life that I want. Thank you very much, but I'm moving. We are moving somewhere. We will get there eventually. Which brings us to taking action. It doesn't have to be every day, but the more consistently and the, the more often that we do something, obviously, the farther we get. One step a day is farther than no steps a day is farther than 10 steps one day and no steps 20 days. So little actions build up, build momentum. And again, you don't have to know the whole staircase. It's enough to say, well, what's next? What's next? What's next? Enough nexts. And we're going to get pretty far. So we just keep going towards our goals. 
understanding that when those limiting beliefs, when those protective thoughts come up, it's just your brain doing its job. It is, it's just doing the thing that it is wired to do, that it has adapted to do. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's helpful. It may be helpful sometimes. You want to be a little bit cautious, right? If you have no money saved and you go off and start a business, well, you probably need some safety net in there. Like, what happens if it fails? Um, maybe you should save some money first. Like, that would be a good plan. If we just haul off and get married tomorrow and we never think, oh, well, what does this long term look like? Okay, well, that may be a problem. So our gremlin brain is helpful in some respects. But again, it's typically, we're never absolute here very often. <laughs> I just said never. <laughs> we're typically not absolute here. Um, typically, it is not helpful if you are trying to grow, if you are trying to do new things. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. You're going to know when it's a limiting belief or a story, when it's a protective action, and when it's actually legit and something that you need to listen to. And that's kind of the secret. That's it. Like, we understand that your brain doesn't want you to be happy. It doesn't give a damn about your happiness. It cares about keeping your meat suit alive and spending as little energy as possible to do so. So if you want something different, if you want a bigger life, if you want a better life, you're going to have to turn down the volume on those thoughts and turn your attention on reasons why it will work and on the next step. You don't have to feel confident. You have to feel like you have all the answers. You just have to be willing to take the next step, which is independent of how you feel. You can be afraid and take the next step. You can be unconfident. You can be terrified. You can be unsure and still take the next step. That is how we manage our gremlin brain. That is how we understand and make it work for us. Because your brain can work for you or it can work against you. But to the untrained brain, it's typically working against you. And that's not super helpful. We want you to have a life that you enjoy. So we do that by understanding why the brain is wired. I've said it a hundred times. But what's one more? To keep you alive. That's it. And to spend as little energy as possible doing so. Again, which is directly opposite to growing because growing, building takes a lot of energy. We want to get clear on what happiness looks like. The values exercise is going to help you do that because if you don't know what you stand for, it's a little hard to build things because you have no foundation. You cannot build a house with no foundation uh, because it won't stand. So get a foundation get some direction. And it is enough to say, not this. Okay, great. We can just do the opposite of this and we'll get clarity along the way. And we're going to start taking action. Do the things that you feel like is the next right choice. If you're really not sure, ask somebody who is living the life that you want to live and be like, hey, how did you do it? Or here's where I'm at. Is there a recommendation that you make for the next step? We can ask for help. That's totally legit. Even though your gremlin brain is going to tell you that they won't like you and they'll judge you and they'll never answer. Test that theory. And we're going to practice not paying attention to releasing, letting go of those little gremlin brain thoughts because they are not helping. They're not helping you. And if they're not helping you, they're not very valuable. Right? We want a brain that is actively helpful. But we have to train our brain to be helpful. We can rewire our brain. The brain is plastic. Plenty of research shows that. And by plastic, I mean it's malleable. We can literally rewire and create new connections, um, which is great news for you because we can rewire our brain to be growth focused and growth mindset by doing these things, understanding how the brain works getting clear on what happiness or the life that you want looks like, taking action towards those things, just do the next right thing or the next thing that you think is right, and then release the things that are not helpful. That is the whole process. So, yeah, that's it. If any part of that is 
um, confusing. If you need information or if you're like, oh my God, I already do this and it totally works for me, send me a message on the Instagram at Amanda underscore chills underscore therapist. And go out and live your little life. And I hope you take the next right step. And if you want the values exercise, the clarity exercise, it's livemyhappyhealth.com slash get clarity. Go have a beautiful day, my little gremlin. (laughs) Okay, bye.